Here is a gymnosperm. Okay, and there should be pine cones. And there are some pine cones. And there should be seeds inside these little flaps. See, those are the male cones. You'll notice that all of the gymnosperms have very thin needle-like leaves. Great. Down at the bottom. But once again, if we look, you can see the needles. Many times the needles are in groups and these needles are in a group of five. So this is a gymnosperm here. Okay. If we look up close, you can see the male cones. This is a burning bush. And if you look very closely, you can see that it has flowers. And if we look at another section, we can see that those flowers turn into fruit. See those berries? We don't eat those berries. Now this is a rose bush and even roses make seeds. So this is a rose from last season. And if we break this open, I wonder what we would find. Why don't we test that and bring that in? These are irises, and these are a good example of plants that have parallel veins. Okay, this is a daffodil. It already flowered. And this is the fruit here which we can actually take off and look at later. I wonder what's inside. This is some type of decorative grass that I have to kind of cut back from last year. Haven't gotten to that yet, but these are parallel veins in these leaves. This is an azalea bush, and if we count the petals, of the flower, we can determine whether it is a monocot or a dicot. This is a Japanese maple tree. And if you look at the leaves, they have branched veins. Therefore, it is a dicot. This is a hosta, and it has parallel veins, making it a monocot. This is a strawberry plant with branched veins therefore it is a dicot these are lilies and they have parallel veins these are the leaves of a gymnosperm see their needles this is the leaf of an angiosperm so angiosperms produce flowers Along with gymnosperms, we get cones. These are a couple of cones that I found in my yard here. And if you take a cone and you tap them upside down, sometimes seeds fall out. So let's see. There we go. This is the ovary from a fertilized daffodil. And if you look closely, you could still see the pistil which is the female reproductive part, and the pollen that got onto the pistil made pollen tubes, and the sperm swam down into the ovules and fertilized those little ovules that are in the ovary to create seeds. So when I say ovary, I'm talking about the fruit of the plant. So that dark green ball is the fruit of a daffodil. So now we are going to cut it open and let's see what we find inside. Slice this open. See what's inside. Looks like there's something good. Look at this. Okay. 
So what's really cool about this, in particular, this specimen, is that you can see which seeds are fertilized, the big ones here, see them? And then you could see which ovules were not fertilized because they didn't grow. See the tiny ovules and then the ovules that were fertilized that turned into seeds. This is from a rose, but this one's very, um, it's kind of old. Obviously it's from last season. So let's try to cut this one in half, see what happens. Hopefully bugs don't run out at me. Hmm. And look, see, inside that fruit, there are also seeds. Like I said, they're a little older. But this, whoop, that is a seed. Angiosperms, which are flowering plants, are divided into two groups, the monocots and dicots. Shortened forms of the words monocotyledon and dicotyledon. So first we're going to look at the difference between a monocot seed and a dicot seed. So having a single cotyledon is a monocot seed. So the example I have here is this, this piece of corn. See the corn? Okay, it just has one cotyledon. That will go there. And we also have a pea, these just came out of the freezer. So here I have a pea, and if we peel the skin of the pea, you will see that it has, it has two cotyledons, do you see that? So it splits in half. So this is a dicot seed. So a pea is a dicot. Okay, and just to prove it to you here, I'm going to take this corn and I'm going to peel the skin off of it. We'll see what the cotyledon looks like underneath. Yep, there we go. That is a single cotyledon, right? So that's a monocot. Just to let you know what's going on over here. That's what all that noise is about. So next we have leaves. So monocots have leaves that have parallel veins. So this is a lily, lily leaf. All the veins are parallel to one another. You can kind of see it better on this side. Okay. Good, so parallel veins in the leaves. We'll put that there. These veins in the leaf, they're not, they're not uh, all parallel to each other, right? And since they branch out, these are dicots. This is a dicot. This one. This is a hosta leaf. See how all the veins are parallel to one another? So this is monocot. Put that in the monocot section here. So this is an acer. And you see how these veins are not, they're not parallel to one another. Okay, so the veins are not parallel. These are beautiful trees, by the way. Okay, I'll put that there. It was a little tricky finding a flower that we could count the leaves of, but this is an azalea flower, and monocots have flowers in multiples of three, and dicots have flower petals that are in multiples of four or five. So we're going to count these petals. And... After counting them, we find that it has 10 petals, which is a multiple of 
five. So an azalea would be a dicot. This is a picture of a daffodil. And if you count the petals, there are six, making it a monocot because six is a multiple of three. Acorn that grows into an oak tree. And if you look at the root, this is a tap root. Now, many oak trees, they start with a tap root. And then as they get really big, it starts to you know branch out off to the sides a little bit. Um, though it starts as a tap root. And if we look at the seed here, this is the acorn, this seed is, has two cotyledons. See that? It has two cotyledons, so therefore it is a dicot. And then back to the chives from yesterday. These are fibrous roots. Because of their fibrous roots, they will go in the monocot section. Okay. If you look back at the flashcards that I posted in the beginning of the unit, you will find cards for monocot and dicot that have images and definitions that will help you classify angiosperms as monocots and dicots. Okay, for today's foldable. You're just going to fold it like this. That's all you have to do. You open it up. We'll just take the quick notes. Okay, we'll do that together. So they bear seeds that are naked. Gymno meaning naked. Not enclosed in a ovary. So the ovary is a fruit. So if you have something like an apple, you're eating an ovary of an apple tree when you eat an apple. Um, they have leaves, stems and roots because of vascular tissue. They produce seeds, usually contain an embryo and stored food. Their leaves are solar powered food producing structures using photosynthesis. Most have needle like or scale like leaves. Then they have stems that support the plant and transport water, nutrients, and food. And they have vascular tissue. Next we have roots, which anchor the plant to the ground, collect water and nutrients from the soil, and store food for the plant. They do not have flowers. They do not have flowers. Reproductive structures are cones or cone-like structures which protect the seed. They produce male and female cones. So the smaller cones are the male and then the larger cones are the female. An example are conifers. Those are the ones that you're most familiar with. Those are pine trees, pine trees in general. So next we have angiosperms, so that's covered seed because the um, seeds are encased in that ovary or that fruit, all right? So leaves and stems and roots. Let me start over. Now we have angiosperm, which means covered seed because the seeds are enclosed in a fruit most of the time. Leaves, stems, and roots because of vascular tissue. They produce seeds, usually contain an embryo and stored food. Leaves, solar-powered food-producing structures. Most have, these are broad leaves. Broad meaning like big and flat. Stems support the plant, transport water, nutrients and food and vascular tissue. Then we have roots, anchor the plants in the ground, collect water and nutrients from the soil, store food for the plant. Their reproductive structure is flowers. Some flower parts develop into a fruit, which protect the seeds. Examples are grass, roses, maple trees, tomato plants, etc. 
categorized into two groups. We have monocots and dicots, right? So now if we compare these two parts of this foldable, you can see that many of them are very similar to one another. So for, um, let's start with the top one. They both produce seeds. They both have le le leaves, stems, and roots. Their leaves undergo photosynthesis, except angiosperms have broad leaves, gymnosperms have needles. The stems do the exact same thing. The roots do the exact same thing. The reproductive structures are cones for gymnosperms and flowers for angiosperms. 